Hi, welcome to 45th Street Baptist Church. My prayer is that this message you're about to hear will be a blessing for you. I want you to sit back and listen. Let God's word infuse you. Let it grow you spiritually. And my prayer is that there will be some practical application for you. If you ever have a chance, why don't you stop by our physical location at 7600 Division Avenue over in the East Lake community. We'd love to have you come in. We believe that one step in the door will remind you why we claim to be the friendliest church from the parking lot to the pulpit. Well, here it comes. God bless you. Everybody doesn't understand how much you need the Lord in their life, that they need the Lord in their life, but we are nothing without him. I don't know if I believed that when I was 20. I'm not so certain I believed it when I was 30. Started to come into focus real clear. After that, when I started realizing that all that I intended to be meant nothing without the Lord and that I couldn't even get there without him leading me. Not by my side. A lot of people say, Lord, I want you by my side. Now, I want him in front. I want to follow him. You remember when you were growing up and your, your, your parents had coworkers and they had kids and you'd see them every now and then and you really them that well. You just see them and sometimes you speak and maybe even have some playful interaction with them. And through the years, watch them grow up and see them at various places and know them by name because your parents have a relationship. That's how our speaker is was in my life growing up. I, he's much younger than me, more of a contemporary of my brother, and so I would only see him in passing from time to time whenever my mama and Miss Delane, Miss Ernestine Delane, we get together and mama would be talking and she'd tell me about something the Delanes were doing and, or had said. And, and she mentioned Maurice and oh, by the way, Maurice is up at Alabama A&M and it's and about the time that Cedric was up, uh, was over at the University of Alabama. And you just watch him grow up and they're your little brothers from a distance. You know enough that if you see them out in public and something ain't right, you're supposed to step up to them and say, hey, you need to stop. You, you need to move on. That, everybody's got somebody in their life like that. And so the fact that Maurice has grown up and decided that he wants to serve the Lord is a beautiful thing. He's never been far from church. He's raised in church. And so it stands to reason that he wants to give the Lord his life. And, and, and he'll tell his story himself. And I've told you before, it's not the fact that he had cancer when he was younger and the Lord delivered him from that. That's led him into the pulpit. That's not it. It's not the fact that he was scholarshiped to A&M to play football. And, and that didn't materialize. I just believe he's had a love for the Lord from very young. And I believe this is his ultimate way of showing how much he loves the Lord. And the Lord has call him to preach his word and so I'm so glad it's it's always my honor to invite my little brother in the ministry over to preach and watch him grow it's always my I believe it's part of my responsibility just like somebody did it for me I've had him here before just like Roosevelt Howard did it for me because I was his little brother like that you know just like J.W. Croom did it for me, invite me over to preach, then so too I have a responsibility to another generation to do it. And so too will Maurice. Mo will have to invite somebody, we'll invite somebody young over to preach. And one day he's going to be somebody's pastor. Oh, he will. When the Lord says so at the time. So Sean, you can get ready for that. You'll be first lady, Delane. That's how life is. That's the cycle of life. And so today, I'm so glad to have my brother from across town. He's still over in the neighborhood at Greater Shiloh and West End under the, the leadership of uh, one of my favorite pastors in the world, Dr. Michael Wesley. So I know he's at a good church. 
Uh, I should add, like Michael Wesley invited me over to preach, same thing. It's, a, it's the same cycle that goes on. I know Maurice has been praying about what the Lord would have on him to say today, so I know he's prepared. But even though he's prepared, the Lord would have us be prepared to receive it too. Yeah. He has to plant this seed on good soil. And so if, if you got something that's blocking your receptors today, I'm asking you to let the Holy Spirit clean off your filters so you can receive whatever the Lord has for us today. I'm looking, I'm looking at him now. I'm going to brag on him because he looked good. Now, he didn't, I don't know if he's been working out or whatever it is, but he didn't trim down some. Whatever it is, I need to be following him over there. <laughs> Call me next time, brother. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do this for me because uh, I need you to, him to know that we, we love having him over here at 45th Street. Raise your right hand and say this after me. Reverend Delane, Delane. Preach, the preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Amen. Come on, bro. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen one more time. Amen. We greet you with Jesus' joy. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Before I do anything, we got to open up, with, open up with a word of prayer. Let us bow our heads. Gracious God, we just thank you for another Lord's Day. Thank you for being with us all week long, dear God. Through trials and tribulations, through ups and downs, dear God, but you kept us, Lord. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. We ask your forgiveness for all our sins and shortcomings. We thank you for your son who went to the cross and died for all our sins. Bless the angel of this house, dear God, Pastor Spars, dear God, and the 45th Street Baptist Church family. Continue to lead them and guide them. Thank you for blessing them to celebrate 100 years in this community, dear God. Continue to bless them 100 more years and beyond where you see fit, Lord. We thank you right now. As now it's time to preach a word, dear God, hide me behind your cross. Move me farther uh, east to west, dear God. Sit Maurice down. Speak through me for these few moments. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To God, who's ahead of my life, I want to thank him. To my brother, my mentor, my good friend, the angel of this house, your pastor, Pastor Sparks. Continue to pray for your pastor. That's your pastor. And God has blessed you all to be around 100 years. That's a blessing. And thank God for that. You ought to give yourself a hand clap for that. <laughs> to, my, to my wife, Sean. Raise your hand. Some people may not know you. If you get to talking about me, she'll take care of that. Uh, to my mom, who's with me, my brother, other family members I've seen, sister-in-law, nieces and nephews. I see some, some of my customers. I see some of my co-workers. I see some of my softball teammates, Twanisha behind me. So I see some folks, so I know I got to be careful. But thank God for that. Thank God for, for people's love that they show to you. I, I won't hold you long. Let's go to uh, Psalms, 20, Psalms 27. And we're going to look at verses 1 and 2. And then we'll skip down to verse 13 and 14. Psalms 27, verses 1 and 2. And then we'll skip down to verses 13 and 14. When you have it, say amen. And I'll be reading from God's word translation. And it reads, the word of the Lord reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who is there to fear? The Lord is my life fortress. Who is there to be afraid of? Evildoers, come, come, evildoers close in on me to tear me to pieces. My opponents and enemies stumble and fail. And we'll skip down to 13 and 14. I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in this world of living. Wait with hope for the Lord. Be strong and let your hearts be courageous. Yes, wait with hope for the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing in reading and hearing and doing of his word. I want to talk to you for a few moments from this subject, a great God in a time of need. And I did a little research, you know, looking at what people like to do in life. 
the top 10 that I did kind of find about that, I'd say the first number 10 would be you want more pleasure in life. You know, people want to get out and enjoy themselves. You want to be popular in life. You want some kind of popularity. You want to some kind of walk that red carpet every now and then. Number eight said you don't want to be lonely. Yeah, you haven't been divorced and this has happened to you. But thank God that you're able to start all over again to start that new life. Everybody needs some companionship in life. Number seven said you want to be more comfortable. We want to be free of aches and pains. You know, sometimes, you know, I know pastor, you're finna be 50. You might get up in the morning and have a few aches and pains every now and then. So thank God for that. Verse six, I mean, I'm sorry, number six says you want, to, you want you and your children to live longer. You know, I always used to hear my parents say, tell me, my brother, we always want to see y'all become adults and become young men. And I thank God for my dad was able to see me and my brother become the young men that he raised us to be. Number five, we'll look at it. You want to live, we want, you want to learn new things in life. You know, it's the 21st century. Century. Everybody text messaging, everybody emailing, everybody tweeting, and everybody Facebooking. You want to learn, everybody got tablets. People don't bring Bibles no more, do it. Everybody got their tablet, their cell phone, or their iPad. But you want to learn something new in life. You want to look better, that's number four. You want to lose a little weight. I told Pastor, I said, I'll be 40 in two years, man. I got to start looking some kind of way, a little bit better in life. So I had to start losing a little weight. And number three, you want to save time. Enjoy time. Life is too short. There's a lot going on in this world, so we got to enjoy the time that God gives us. Number two, you want to save some money. And we all want to do that. It's hard living check to check to check to check, but you want to start saving some money. And the number one thing people want in life is a high-paying job. And I think we all want that in life. But I'm here to tell you, God offers help for today and hope for the future in the time of need. The God that we serve right now we need to know that we serve a great God who will be there for us in time of need. If we look at it, David, who named me beloved, was the writer of the Psalms. He was the uh, second king of the United Kingdom of the Hebrew people, the youngest of Jesse's children out of eight boys. David was also uh, watched over sheep. He killed a lion and a bear. The reason he did that because they tried to attack his flock. So if anybody trying to attack something of yours, you're going to take care of it. So that's what David did. But at the same time, they was an outstanding musician as well. But also, we had to realize they was subject to sin. He was human just like we were. So we had to realize that we all going to have issues. We all going to have problems. But we got to realize we serve a great God in the time of need. Amen. The book of Psalms provide poetry for the expression of praise, worship, and confession to God. The greatest collection of these psalms is our prayers and express in the heart of soul of humanity. In them, the whole range of human experience is expressed Instead, David and other writers of this book honestly poured out their true feelings. They poured out their powerful and lifelong, lifelong change experience with God. Then some has confessed their sins, expressed their doubts and fears, asked God for help in time of trouble, and praise and worship God. Here in the beginning of Psalms 27, fear is a dark shadow that envelops us and ultimately imprisons us as well within ourselves. Each of us has been a prisoner of fear at one time or another. I have fears. I don't like rats. I don't like snakes. I don't like snakes that crawl on the belly and I don't like two-legged snakes. You'll catch that later. But at the same time, we gotta be careful with our fears. Our fears will get us in trouble. I wanna give you five things that I think people have fear of. One is rejection. And we all have been rejected in our life, but at the same time, it's called getting down on your knees and praying. You know, at the same time, rejection, you have rejection of a job. You might have thought you were going to get this job. You have rejection of a relationship in life. You know, you might have thought, hey, I'll make you pull that guy or that girl, but you didn't pull that guy or girl. You have rejection of making a team. Or you just thought you were just cocky, you were going to make the basketball team, but you didn't make it. We have rejection of getting to the college of our choice. But at the same time, let me tell you, we serve a great God in the time of need. Right. Number two is misunderstanding. We all have had that concept of having misunderstanding in life with someone. Lack of communication, judging others. Oh, it's just like if someone came here right now, we're going to judge them. They might come in here looking dirty, smelling, but at the same time, we don't know what kind of issues that person may have went through in life. That's, that's that part of being misunderstanding. Number three is uncertainty. We all have uncertainty in life. We doubt. We worry. I look at it. If you ever cut your grass, the birds don't worry about nothing. 
Once you get through cutting that grass, what they do? They swoop on down, they find them something to eat. Why, would she, why should we worry? We have suspicion about things. We have mistrust. Right. Yeah, people have done us wrong and done things in our life. And I love this. This is my favorite scripture. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Yeah. Lean not to thy own understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. At the same time, when we go with our own understanding, that's when we mess up, don't we? But when we go with God's understanding, God take care of us. But at the same time, we got to learn to acknowledge God, too, at the same time. Number four is sickness. People have fear of sickness. Now, I can attest to that. When I had cancer at the age of 21, and I was going through radiation at the the time, radiation where they put you like you're going in a microwave. Your skin color is a whole other different color. At the point, I was to the point where I just gave up on life. But thank God for godly parents who was able to step in and could keep praying for you and saying, hey, don't give up. Don't want to hear you talk that way. You have faith and trust in God. But at the same time, people have fear with the sickness come illness. People get frustrated. People get grumpy and start to complain. You know, have you ever seen somebody who's sick? They take it out on everybody. They want to be upset, want to say this and want to say that to you. But at the same time, we got to learn to trust in God and know that he's a great God in a time of need. The last one I would say people have fear of is death. A lot of us wonder, will I go to heaven or hell? A lot of us feel hopeless about things when it comes to death. A lot of us wonder, how will I die? That's just like I heard my pastor say, we've seen every red truck in the world, and if God told we're going to die, we see a red truck, we'll be trying to duck and dodge every red truck we see. But people have fear of death. But at the same time, when you become a Christian, and God saved your life, you already know you're going to go to those that heavenly, where it's always going to be church every Sunday, going to be singing every Sunday, praise dancing every Sunday. Thank God for that. But we have to realize, we, but we can conquer fear by using the bright liberation light of the Lord who brings salvation. If we want to dispel the darkness of fear, let us remember what the psalmist just said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Know that the enemy think they can hold us, they can hold us down. But let the enemy know that I'm a treasure child of the Most High King. We are in a spiritual warfare right now. That's why we got to put our arm on every day. We got to put on our helmet of salvation with guys our thoughts, guys our thinking. Right. Put on our breastplate of righteousness, which will protect our feelings, protect our emotions. Right. Put on your belt, where you have the spirit of truth, the spirit of discernment. Put on your sandals, which will give you peace with God, peace with the Son, peace with the Holy Ghost, peace with people, and peace with yourself. Put on the shield, because you're going to have some negative folks out there. Oh, yeah. You got to shield out those negative thoughts and negative people. In your left hand, put the sword, which is the word of God. Because when the enemy try to attack you, you can say, hey, trust in the Lord all thy heart. You can say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Oh, uh, Shield of goodness and mercy shall follow me. You can just quote bad scriptures to people, let them know that you are a child of God. But at the same time, sometimes we got to straight that arm up sometimes. Because people can disrupt your spirit. People can mess you up. But at the same time, remember, we're in the spiritual warfare right now. By the house of the Lord and his temple, David could be referring to the tabernacle in Gibeon, to the sanctuary he had put up in the house in the Ark of the Covenant, or the temple that his son Solomon built, he was to build. David probably had the temple in mind because he had made plans for it, but David also used, to use the temple to be in the presence of the Lord. The greatest desire was to live in God's presence each day of his life. And that's how we should be. We should want to live in God's presence every day of our life. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, it's not always going to be easy. Yeah. But remember, we serve a great God in a time of need. Sadly, this is not the greatest desire of everybody who called itself to be believers. But those who live daily in God's presence now will be able to enjoy a relationship with him forever. Just like I said, Psalms 23 and 6 say, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow him me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But before we get to ever, thank God for his grace and his mercy. Thank God with his mercy that that car wreck you was almost in. Thank God for that grace and mercy that you was able to have a roof over your head. Thank God for that grace and mercy where you was able to have food on your table. Thank God for that grace and mercy for all that he does for us. You know, we often run to God when we experience difficulty. But David saw God, God in presence every day of his life. When trouble came his way, he was already in God's presence, probably just praying and asking God for forgiveness. You know, we all, like I tell him, I'm a professional mess up. Mess up all the time. But at the same time, we learn to go in God's presence to ask his forgiveness. And the same thing David did. He went in God's presence and asked God for forgiveness. But believers, we want to call on God and ask God, why me, Lord? Why are you doing me like this? 
Now, when the good is going good, we get that SSI and Social Security, and retirement check, and everything. Or we get our income every two weeks or every month. How we get paid, and everything's going well. We don't want to talk to God, but let something happen. Well, we lose our income, or we lose our job, or our kids are cutting up on us, or our wife or husband don't want to do this and want to do that, then we're going to say, Lord, why me? But I learned to develop a relationship with God all day. You know you get personal with God when they start calling you by your nickname, Mo. You know you're in there, in there good with God then when they start talking to you like that. But that's the relationship that you want to have with God. But what about when we, like I say, when the good is going good, we don't talk to him. But when trouble arises, we want to just say, why me, Lord? But we shouldn't question God. We got to realize the word of God said, I won't put no more on you than you can bear. Yeah. And God won't do us like that. Right. Many, have, many, many have had the sad experience of being forsaken by a mother or father. Broken homes, difference of beliefs, addiction to drugs or alcohol, psychological issues can leave a child crippled by this loss. Right. Even as adults, this pain can linger. God can take that place in our life. Feel that void and heal that hurt. He can direct us to adults who may take in the role of father or mother, and they can show us that love. And we all need some kind of love in life. And we have to thank God for people that you step in and take that role. And I thank God for your pastor. I do. He's a great mentor to me. He gives me good advice. We always talk. We might not talk every day, but when we do talk, we talk maybe five, ten minutes, but it's good sound advice and thank God for him. In the land of the living simply means this life. David was obviously going through a trial, but he was confident that in the present time, God would see him through it. Someone may be going through something right now. I don't know what you're going through, but God knows. God, God will take care of you. Trust him. Just believe. You know, they say, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We don't have nothing to want for in life. Because we serve a great God in a time of need. David knew from experience what it meant to wait on the Lord. He had been, a, been anointed king at the age of 16, but didn't become king until he was 30. Wow. During the interim time, he was chased through the wilderness by jealous King Saul. David had to wait on God for the fulfillment of the promise to the raiment. Later, after being king, he was being chased by his rebellious son, Absalom. Yeah. Waiting on God is not easy. Yeah. Not tell anybody patience, man. You got to pray for patience. Yes. That's for anything in life. Yes. I mean, like I say, we're going through chemotherapy and radiation, and I had cancer. God developed me with patience. I mean, I thank God for it. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes no patience can get, get a little rough sometimes. Can get a little, th- you know, even when you got kids, patience get a little rough sometimes. Being married, your patience get a little rough sometimes. But, you know, you thank God for that. God won't, like I said, God won't put no more than you can bear. And waiting on God, like I said, waiting on God is not easy. Often it seems that he's not answering our prayers. God going to tell us three things. Yes, no, or wait. That's right. So which one do you want to wait? Do you want to hear from him? Yes, no, or wait. Sometimes he may tell you yes on purpose. Just see how you're going to do or how you're going to react. Yeah. Sometimes he may tell you no on, pur- on purpose. Just see if you're going to be patient enough to do it. He's going to tell you to wait sometimes. Just see how patient you're going to be in life. So we have to see that this kind of thinking implies that God's not in control. Or we think he may not be, be being fair to us and then like that. But I, I'm here to tell you that he's, God is worth waiting for. Amen. Nine things I want to give you will make, will make me feel like we have a great God that we serve in a time of need. Right. The first one is God is this. Right. The very fact that God created the universe and everything in it includes us make God great. Right. We have to realize when God made you, God didn't make no jump. Amen. He made you who you want to be. Yeah, I used to be ashamed to be tall back in the day. I like I felt like I was taller than everybody, man, when I was in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. But when I got to college and high school, seeing other people tall, I said, okay, here's some tall giants out there. So we have to realize when God made you, he made you the way he wants you to be. He yeah. created you in his own image. Don't be ashamed of you. Short, tall, dark, light, God made you. We are his children. Number two, God is an authority figure who provides boundaries. I don't mean that him in terms of him being a police officer, waiting on you around the corner to catch you in a mistake or something like that. But rather in the terms of loving parents who set boundaries to keep us safe and on the right track. So we have to realize, just like our heavenly, I mean our earthly parents, our heavenly father is here to take care of us. Has it been a time we was like, man, I ain't got no money, got nothing to eat, got no gas, 
But God shows up, don't he? He see the angel uh, blessing your way. Someone to come in and say, hey, here's $20. He saw you get that $20, you're like, okay, I'll give you some gas. Go to McDonald's dollar menu. Uh, then I got a little bit left over. Maybe I give me some later on for dinner or something. But I'm here to tell you, he's an on-time God. You know, so number three, we'll look at God give meaning to life. Have you just ever thought about your life? What God put you on earth to be? You know, so we have to look at it. What about our lives to have meaning? But if this life is all there is, wow. then there really is nothing not a meaning. But with God, however, life has a purpose and a meaning. Amen. God got a purpose for us all here on earth. We may not have understand what it is right now. We may not understand what God wants to do, but he got a purpose for us all. But at the same time, I tell you, keep praying, keep searching, and you'll find what God wants you to do. We have to realize God is faithful. He's faithful in all that he does for us. God keep his promise. God said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Man, we serve a great God. Maybe, like I said, again, there have been times that we felt like God, I mean, everybody just don't love us. Nobody don't want to say nothing to us. Nobody don't care for us. But I tell you, God is faithful, man. When you got them tears rolling down your eyes and you're upset, you just feel that imaginary with somebody just dabbing them tears away from you, you can say, that's God. When you feel like, hey, I'm upset and I can't get this going on, and God whips me here, I'm here to take care of you. That's God. You know, that's good to hear, to know that God will take care of you. To know that our God is faithful. Then number five, God refreshes us. God restores us with strength. Psalms 23 says, he restores my soul. And we all need restoring. Just like our, gas, our car need gas in it, our bodies need to fill up too sometimes. You know, midweek service is, is a blessing. If you ever go to a midweek service to hear God's word, sometimes we need a fill up in life, you know, so we have to thank God for that. When we are weak, that's when God shows up and gives us, our, give, give us his strength, and we have to thank God for that. Number six, God renews us. God give us new beginnings and new mercy. God revive us. Nothing like a new beginning, huh? Start your life over. Look at, some, look at uh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if anyone comes into Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, new things have become. The old you, let it stay where it's at. Let it be. Yeah, you might have your buddies that say, hey, you remember when we used to do this, do that? Nah, man, we don't do that no more. I'm a new person right now. You know, hey, thank God for the new you. If people don't like what the new you are, tell them go on about their business. Because you are a treasure trial of the most high king in life. Number seven. God give us patience. Again, we need that, don't we? God help, and God help us to wait calmly and give, understanding, give us understanding. In Isaiah 40, 29, 40, chapter 40, verse 29 through 31 says, he gives strength to those who grow tired and increases the strength of those who are weak. Even young people grow tired and become weary. Young men will stumble and fall. Yet the strength of those who wait with, wait with hope in the Lord will be renewed. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not get tired. So we have to thank God for that. When we're weary, God steps in and again say, hey, it's going to be all right. When you're tired, and some of you may, you know, I play ball. When you're tired, that fourth quarter come around, and you're like, man, I ain't going to make it. But God steps in and intervene and take care of you. Number eight, God teaches us. God help us to listen, help us learn from our mistakes. God leads us on a better path. And we look at Psalms 27 and 11 in this um, text here. Where it says, teach me, your, teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path. Because I have enemies who spies on me. So we have to thank God for teaching us. We all want to be taught in life. We all we want to learn something. Something, take something out with you. You know, I, I love teaching young people. So I get a chance to intervene and interact with them. Because they have a lot to say to us too. And you can learn from a child. You might not think you can, but you can. Something is being said. My little nephew, he's five, but it's something special about him. For him each Sunday to sit back and look at the folks playing the drums every Sunday. Something's being done to keep his spirits going. And number, eight, number nine, God cares about you. John 3, 16 tells us that God so loved the world that he sent his son to die for our sins. Romans 5 and 8 says, expand on that to say that God sent Jesus to die for you while you were yet still sinners. So God loved us so much to send his only begotten son to die for us. Now that's love. How many of us would really die for somebody? 
Something to think about. And sometimes I get the can't help it sometimes when I think about the goodness of God. And what I mean by the can't help is I call him the name of Jesus. I love him. I can't help but love him. Can't help but praise him. Can't help but honor him. So sometimes you may get the can't help it sometimes. But make good use of waiting on the waiting time by discovering what God may be trying to teach you and what he's doing. And what else make God so great is that his son, Jesus Christ, paid his sin debt for us. It's something about the name of Jesus. The living, God, the living water, the bread of life, the Alpha and Omega, the Messiah, the, mate, the teacher. It's something else about that great name of God, great name of Jesus. The good shepherd, author and finisher of our faith, the almighty, the everlasting father, the bright and morning star, the wonderful counselor. But one thing about our God, to get to, get to our God through Jesus Christ, know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That's a great God that we serve in the time of need. Now, I will ask you this. What about you? What are you doing to ask God to help you through things in life? What about you? What are you saying about God? Are you just calling on him when you just really need something? Or are you just always talking to him each time in your life? Let us pray. Gracious God, we just thank you right now, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your many blessings, dear God. I pray right now someone will... Accept you, dear God. Help, help them to know that you're their forever friend, dear God, in Jesus. Help them to know that you're there for them. Help them to know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. We thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for this time of sharing. We just praise your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I will open up the doors of the church. The doors of the church are open. Have, will you accept Jesus Christ into your life? Just like on Facebook, that friend request that Jesus give you. Are you going to accept it? Are you going to, uh, you going to deny him? The doors of the church are open. Thank you. Well, there it is. I hope you were blessed by the God's word. It's my prayer that you will grow from this message. But in case you need a refresher, you can always stop by our physical location and worship with us at 7600 Division Avenue over in the East Lake community. I believe one visit and you'll find out that we truly are the friendliest church from the parking lot to the pulpit. Looking forward to meeting you. God bless you. Take care.